Hey guys, it's Shanna. Welcome back to my channel. I wanted to answer a question from someone who just got accepted to UBC Med and had a bunch of questions uh, specific to UBC Med. I'm forgetting in. I'm so excited and I'm so excited for everyone else who got good news. It's gonna be a great time and feel free to let me know if you have other questions besides this. Um, leave them in the comments below. The first one is, how did I like the spiral curriculum? I hated the spiral curriculum. I'm sorry, UBC. Instead of doing things like learning cardiology for, two, you know, three weeks and then respiratory for three weeks and then MSK in three weeks, we switch it up. So every week is something different. So one week we might learn everything about abdominal pain and then the next week we'll learn diabetes and then the next week we'll learn stroke and then heart attack. And it's just going to be all these things that are not related. But then in a few months later, I'll learn, you know, after stroke, we're going to learn dementia. And then four months later, we'll learn about uh, Parkinson's disease. And so it, the idea behind that is that you don't learn all of neurology at once and forget it because you never touch it again, but you are learning it a piece and then you're going to learn another piece of it again. And so you're going to have to go back and review everything you learned back in stroke week a few months ago, and then you'll recall all of it. And then when you get Parkinson's again, you're going to recall all the times that you've learned any neurological stuff. Um, so it does have its benefits. And I do find that you know, now when I've learned something related, then I do go back and think about something that was related. Um, but I personally don't like it because I'm the type of person who likes to learn everything at once. Um, because when we're making a differential diagnosis, and we've only learned a few things, um, you know, if I've only learned diabetes, and I've only learned stroke, and I've only learned heart attack, I, I, it's difficult for me to come up with a broad differential diagnosis. And I also didn't feel like I had enough of a knowledge base to be able to effectively use the spiral curriculum at the beginning. So I was very confused and I would say I also didn't like the spiral curriculum because I found it really hard to use external resources. So stuff that are really based from state schools and stuff like you're trying to use osmosis or you're trying to use boards and beyond or just uh, basically any resource. Everything is usually structured in terms of like our cardiology together and all the like, topics together. And so when we do it in pieces, no one else who's making useful external resources is making it um, you know, all these resources just for nausea week or something. And writing practice questions, it will be um, just impossible because no one's going to make it exactly how our school structured our curriculum. So I would say I don't like it because I really like to use external resources to supplement my learning. And I found that frustrating. What I wish the school was like is that we did a block-like system for first year and then in second year if we wanted to spiral that would be inappropriate because we already had a knowledge the spiral curriculum because you want to if you're learning about kidney disease you just want to learn everything about kidney disease and you find it confusing to only learn like one type um what i did is i just spent extra time on my own you know learning and fleshing out my knowledge of that system and so that's not what our school calls for but it just helped me understand a little bit more um, so if we're doing neurology, I want to learn everything related to that and learn the extra, just go the extra mile to feel like I had a basis in a system. Question two, what are my general thoughts on the workload and the atmosphere? So at UBC, it's pass fail. And I think it's pretty easy to pass, but I had put a lot of my pressure on myself to do well. I didn't want to just pass. I wanted to know everything. And I there is a lot of class that you got to attend to in first year, eight o'clock class, and then we go all the way till five or something. I just found that was a bit too much. Second year is actually a lot more manageable than first year is. On the workload, I was like really easy and manageable. Once I started like um, that were pre-recorded, so I would watch them at two times speed and watch them at my own pace. Um, I just felt like I suddenly had so much more free time and I was able to study better because instead of watching that lecture for one hour, I was watching that lecture in half an hour and I could spend the other half hour studying that lecture instead of spending two hours to watch that lecture in person and then another two hours to study it. But if you're asking this question because you're afraid of whether or not you can handle it, I was very afraid I couldn't handle it either. But remind yourself that you've gone through a lot to make it here. You've probably had a huge workload when you're an undergrad and also balancing all the bazillion extracurriculars. So you are definitely capable. You had the grades to get here. You know how to study. You're smart enough to be here you're gonna be able to adjust for the first semester is to not overload yourself with taking on research, not overload yourself with um, trying to get involved in all these like clubs and stuff. I think I would just try to adjust to being in medical school. What is it like to be in school? What is it like to study the amount of content and allow yourself to adjust to the workload and the atmosphere a bit um, before you start taking stuff on. And then maybe, you know, the second semester, that's more appropriate. I think that's when I started getting into stuff I would say the content, the amount of the content we learn is it feels massive and it feels impossible to know. So try not to put pressure on yourself to have everything down all the time. 
focus on the big picture, on what's clinically relevant, and uh, not get lost in the details. I tend to do that. I want to know every single thing about everything, but um, instead of you know memorizing all nine things of a criteria to you know diagnose COPD, and you need to know everything and all the numbers, just think more in general. Like, is this COPD? I need to you know how it presents. I need to know what tests I'm going to run, and vaguely know what kind of results I want to find, but not need to know every single. A uh, little thing about everything more often is actually something I would recommend uh, for me I like to do research on the side and so I think at some point I wanted to juggle a whole bunch of things at once That was probably not a good idea. I think I would have added them on gradually So, you know add one Recalibrate add another recalibrate and not just like signing yourself up for three So even though you want to get involved in all these cool things on the side, which I t totally recommend is to always prioritize your studying and so if you're gonna have a conflict in terms of you know you're you're asked to organize this really cool volunteer event um this has actually happened to me i really wanted to do it but you know shortly before exam weeks and in the end my biggest priority is being a medical student and um, i originally wanted to do both but i realized that this exam was actually harder than the previous exam and the content was just a lot more difficult and it was heavier I had to say no, I actually sorry I can't do this because my priority is being a medical student and I'm just going to focus on handling that uh, workload. I also say in terms of workload, it, I feel like it varies depending on um, what you're interested in, what's your comfort level. For example, I really like pharmacology. So in terms of learning pharmacology, I found that really easy and interesting to me and physiology as well interests me. But um, for me, learning histology was really difficult, um, maybe because I don't have a background in that, I don't know. But I found that really hard and overwhelming to keep all those things and I found anatomy really heavy and overwhelming for me to learn um, and so that workload felt really stressful to me like just to go for a three hour anatomy lab I felt like I had to prep for it I had to do post things because I felt like I didn't know anything when I was there um, so I think the workload what exactly in the workload is going to be difficult is going to be different for everyone depending on what they like and what they enjoy but I would say I think everyone has something that they struggle with and then there's also something that you're going to be really strong in so if you're a biochem major maybe you're going to ace all that biochem stuff you're going to ace all that kidney electrolyte stuff i don't know i love the atmosphere it's so different from being a pre-med when everyone's competing everyone doesn't want to share um and you just feel it just makes you feel terrible in that pre-med atmosphere but that school is definitely so much different and i love that it's all about helping each other out at least within my friend group you know we're sending it if we find a really good resource we're sending it to each other if we have questions we're always helping each other out um we're always practicing each other we're lifting each other up and um cheering each other on to do things so i say the atmosphere is amazing and the physicians that you interact with in terms of finding mentors is really great everyone's here to support you and wants to help you learn i think i was really afraid of um there's a there's a conception of physicians being really mean as preceptors. I, I I'm not starting, I haven't started clerkship yet, so I don't know if maybe that'll be true later. But you know you're being yelled at, you're being picked on in front of your classmates, you're being um, discriminated against. I found that it's it's not been too bad. I mean there's there's a couple there's definitely some moments that come to mind, but generally I found that most of my preceptors that have been so supportive of me learning, even when I make a really you know junior mistake, they're they're like it's okay. Um, you know they're going to be firm that that was that was a bad mistake they're not going to sugarcoat it but um generally they're not, they're not going to shame you for it they're just going to show you some other ways for you to approach it better worry about as a female is how am i going to balance having a family having a partner and uh, my work life later on and so i found that some of the preceptors i had were really receptive to my questions on that and so happy to give advice on how they found a better balance in terms of their work life and stuff so i definitely find that the overall culture is all about helping each other out and i think it's great great how do you find the research opportunities um number one there's a big database so at ubc we have this thing called flex which is dedicated time for students to do research um and we have this huge research there's like tons of stuff i want to say there's like 50 different people on that um researchers that are offering projects um to students and so they'll take a couple students on and they have a project laid out for you just have to like go out and pick it i found that it was really easy to cold email people to find research opportunities i think it was really hard as a met as an undergrad but for some reason as a medical student it's really easy um which is really nice um so when i send a cold email um, and I've done that. I think I found two different people just by cold emailing because I just found their research like super fascinating 
and I just like asked them if I could get involved and they were open to it and they happened to have projects. Um, so not every, not every clinician does research, I think that's important to acknowledge. You might find the coolest person ever that you admire but they don't necessarily do research so I would keep that in mind before you email them so I would make sure they actually do research but um, in general I found it not too bad. Um, I think sometimes lecturers uh, some lecturers will even offer at the beginning or the end uh, they'll talk about some of the research they do and um, to ask you to email them if you want to talk or go up and talk to them if you want to get involved in their specialty. Also get this bulletin sent out every week. A research grant coming up for students or someone's looking to get a student and then also our um, medical student undergrad society newsletter sometimes people residents or physicians that are looking for help with a particular project will send that out or people post in the Facebook group so yeah I feel like there's there's tons of ways to get involved in research and yeah there's tons whatever you feel you want to do or what kind of non-research projects do students do for flex so educational stuff so um, they make anatomy videos for example or design modules to teach um, content or help with making the apps so basically there's a tons of opportunities for this so if you want to get involved in medical education the faculty are very keen to have you and there's always stuff going on in terms of medical education development the one i saw in some email before was how to build like resilience or emotional wellness or something like that in medical students so there's like that kind of stuff like physician wellness and physician culture and that kind of stuff so that kind of stuff is really cool um, I think there's also stuff people do like create a volunteer program. I believe the Reading Bear Society is kind of like a non-profit and they do some really cool stuff and that, so that was someone's flex project. I think some people even do like advocacy work. Um, number five, have you had to do a lot of commuting? Yes, 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 yes. So all of first year, not all, but most of first year except for one day a week is over at UBC. And then in second year, most of your classes are at Vancouver General Hospital. And then once in a while we go over to UBC. Um, but besides commuting to those places, so I didn't live near either of them, so I give advice to myself or any of you, if you have that, you know, financial freedom to do so, um, live near UBC in your first year, live near VGH in second year, um, don't be like me and be commuting at weird hours at the, in the morning or in the night because you want to stay and study and then suddenly there's like no bus. Um, that sucks. <laughs> um, but I just think like it's just so busy and you want to be involved in more things. I think a limitation for me was uh, from getting more involved was like I had to commute and go home. I think if I lived, you know, at UBC, I would have been involved more in intramural sports or more of the, I, I'm not involved in many club activities and that might be because I live like quite a ways away from school, not not very far, but a decent a commute away. So I think if I lived, you know, next to VGH, like I would say most of my, my year does live near VGH, they're able to drop over for an interesting talk by a physician or they're able to drop in for this, you know, for choir or for um, a workout group workout class or something um, and I think that's that would be really amazing to do um, one thing that really changed the game for me is I was busing a lot in first year and once I started driving in second year that really made a big difference in quality of life in second year for sure and being able to get around I think if you are able to have access to a car and you're able to drive that would be just really game changer for sure um, but besides that in for family practice which we have once a week these are at all sorts of places and so you definitely have to commute for those. I was placed luckily in Vancouver a couple times uh, but I still had to commute so I still had to you know, take the bus or drive. Uh, I was placed in White Rock a couple times so that was quite a long commute out and then I was also placed in Richmond um, in quite a ways out so definitely uh, I would say a ton of commuting skills. So this is separate from family practice in second so in first year most everything's pretty much at UBC but in second year I've been told to go to St. Paul's a lot so that was been a commute so I'll you know go to VGH in the morning and then we'll go to St. Paul's in the afternoon so that's another commute to make um, but other people get placed in Surrey and Langley in Royal Columbia which is a new Westminster um, so people do have to go all sorts of places so besides going for you're commuting to classes, you actually have to commute to family practice, and then you also have to commute for your clinical skills. And sometimes that can be really far, right, to Langley and stuff. So keep that in mind in terms of um, making sure you have a way of getting around. Six, do you know the specialty that you're interested in? Has that specialty choice changed since you've come in med? Yes, I did come in with something in mind. A few in mind that I really like, 
and I'm pretty sure I like them. There's that big fear that you come in with this specialty that you really like and then you're going to be dissuaded and you're going to want something totally different. Um, I was really worried about that at least. So, But actually I found that instead, I just the ones that I had come in interested in, I just became more interested in them and I, I never, I didn't have anything that I said, oh, I really like to do, but actually that's awful and I totally don't want to do that at all. I didn't have that experience and um, more so my medical experiences, I had a few that I was interested in and then as I got more exposure to more different fields or as we had family practice experience, I realized a greater number of fields that I was interested in. So like a field that I didn't even know existed um, was just like, it just it was amazing and I now that's one of the ones that I'm really interested in considering um, and so I just added that on though so I think a lot of people actually their minds changed about what they wanted to do since they came in um, but those of us that did come in with a pretty strong commitment to something I would say most people the ones that came in with that intensity have stuck to that and yes. welcome to the UBC fam um, but if you have more questions let me know and make another video um, guys thanks for watching subscribe like leave me more comments um, thank you guys for this opportunity to be helping out and mentoring and answering questions it gives me uh, gives me a lot of energy and it's fun so thank you and I'll see you guys in the next video bye